The big news story of the week in the business world is that Toys R Us has filed for bankruptcy. I've been getting quite a few requests to make a video about it, and I completely agree. This is a terrific subject to talk about. So I dropped everything I was doing and dove right into it. Keep in mind that this video is being made the same week as the announcement, and it's sometimes hard to see the full picture from such a close distance. So don't be too harsh if you're watching this sometime in the future and I say something that sounds a little foolish. So what's going on with Toys R Us? If you're like me, you had no idea they were in any kind of trouble and were shocked by the news. And I'm guessing your next thought was a quick judgment that it must be a result of the internet taking sales away from the store locations. I would even bet you clicked on this video anticipating to hear that. And I don't necessarily disagree with that conclusion, but I guarantee that what's happening with Toys R Us right now runs much deeper than losing sales to Amazon. In 1948, a man named Charles Lazarus opened a baby furniture store called Children's Bargain Town. The company started selling toys, and the demand for them grew. Mr. Lazarus, being an astute businessman, noticed that furniture is pretty sturdy and long-lasting. But toys tend to be the exact opposite. The focus of the business soon became toys, and in 1957, Toys R Us was born. Anyone know where the name Toys R Us comes from? Well, obviously it conveys that they're in the toy business, but any idea as to why those three words are combined in such a strange way? And why it uses the letter R? Well, let me repeat the founder's name. Charles Lazarus. Did I just blow your mind? Another fun fact, any guesses as to why the R is backwards? Well, Charles Lazarus was a big fan of the band Korn. Okay, one of those two facts was true, and the other was a lame joke. You decide which is which. A few years later, Jeffrey the Giraffe was created as the company's mascot. He was originally named Dr. G. Raff, so I'm sure you can understand why they renamed him. In 1978, Toys R Us went public, meaning anyone could become a partial owner through the purchase of some stock. Five years later, they made a logical expansion with the creation of Kids R Us, a clothing store for kids. I actually don't care for this name as much because the name Toys R Us identifies what they sell, whereas Kids R Us identifies their target customer. But kids are also the target customer for Toys R Us. My vote would have been to name it Clothes R Us, since people recognize the R Us part as targeting kids, the clothes part lets you know what they sell, and it follows the same naming format established by Toys R Us. But I suppose most company names don't describe what they sell anyway, so I'm sure there were other factors responsible for its demise in 2003. But I can't get into them right now. This video is about Toys R Us, not Kids R Us. I've already spent too much time on Kids R Us. 1996 marked the beginning of Babies R Us, which despite having the same naming issues as Kids R Us, still stands today. In 2005, the company was taken off the stock market and transformed into a private company when it was purchased in a leveraged buyout. And in September of 2017, Toys R Us filed for bankruptcy. This is a company that began 60 years ago with roots going even further back. A company that became the standard for toys. Any time within the last 30 years, including today, if Family Feud were to survey 100 people and ask them to name a toy store, the number one answer on the board would be Toys R Us. And as of this week, this company has filed for bankruptcy. So how on earth did this happen? The short answer is that they have too much debt. But that's a no-brainer, of course they have too much debt, why else would they file for bankruptcy? So then in my mind, the real question becomes, how did they get so much debt? So let's try to figure out this one together, Dora the Explorer style. Here's a graph that shows their long-term debt over the past 14 years. So which year do you think we should further investigate to try to find out where all this debt came from? Well, it certainly appears that something happened between 2005 and 2006. 
And I actually already told you what it was. In 2005, the company went private through a leveraged buyout. A leveraged buyout is when you buy a company using a bunch of debt. I can best explain it through an example. Say I wanted to buy Toys R Us. The selling price is $10 million, but I only have $1 million. So I go to the bank and try to get a loan for the remaining $9 million. But it turns out I need a pretty good collateral in order to take out a $9 million loan. So I think a minute about what I have that's of any value. My car probably won't cover it. Oh, I know. How about Toys R Us? If I get the loan, I'll own Toys R Us, and that can be my collateral. So I get the loan, and now I have two things. I own Toys R Us, but I also have $9 million in debt. But really, Toys R Us has $9 million in debt. This is an incredibly simplified version of what happened in 2005. But it didn't cost $10 million. It cost $6.6 .6 billion, most of which was paid for through loans that went right on the balance sheet of Toys R Us. So that explains the huge debt increase. Now, at this point, I'm sure you're saying, well, that sounds risky. And you're completely right. Think of it as taking out a mortgage to buy a house. Once you do that, you better have a reliable source of income, because as soon as the cash flow stops, you're liable to lose your home. Same with Toys R Us. As long as the cash flow situation is fine, there's no worries. But once it slows down, well, here we are. This is from the website Investopedia. Leveraged buyouts have had a notorious history, especially in the 1980s, when several prominent buyouts led to the eventual bankruptcy of the acquired companies. This was mainly due to the fact that the leverage ratio was nearly 100% and the interest payments were so large that the company's operating cash flows were unable to meet the obligation. I think this reinforces what I just said. And just in case you need more proof, here it is from Toys R Us themselves in their annual report from a few years back. Our substantial indebtedness could have important consequences including making it more difficult for us to make payments on the debt as our business may not be able to generate sufficient cash flows from operating activities to meet our debt service obligations. Here's my point. When that leveraged buyout occurred 12 years ago, it was well known that one of the big risks of doing it was potential bankruptcy. I know as outsiders this crept up on all of us, but for anyone on the inside or anyone following their financial condition over the years, this was no surprise. To continue with my analogy, Toys R Us has taken a pay cut and are now having trouble making their mortgage payments. But now we have a second question on the table. Why aren't they able to make their payments? If everything went according to plan, there would be no trouble right now. So why aren't they generating enough money? This is where our minds always jump straight to blaming the internet. And I can't disagree with that. It's happening everywhere. But in defense of Toys R Us, they do seemingly have a healthy internet presence. On their website, they talk about how they launched ToysRUs.com almost 20 years ago and how it became one of the fastest growing sites in the toy and baby product shopping categories. And that ToysRUs.com is one of the most visited sites in their category. And I see no evidence against these claims. Also, in 2007, they acquired eToys.com and Toys.com, which further strengthened their online presence. I know Amazon is darn near impossible to compete with, but as far as I can tell, Toys R Us hasn't exactly been ignoring their online component of their business. Another thing to point to are stores like Walmart and Target that offer similar, if not the same toy products at lower prices. Not to mention the convenience of picking them up during your routine shopping trips. Maybe it's just because I'm older now, but Toys R Us doesn't seem to have the same weight it once had. Meaning, before it felt like the place to go for toys, and now I see it as the expensive place to go for toys. Something that I'm inclined to blame for all of this is the decline of toy popularity in general. Just think about it. 
Kids aren't spending the better part of their day playing with toy trucks and yo-yos. It's all about technology. Video games are awesome today. It's no longer Pong and Dig Dug, it's Breath of the Wild and GTA V. Games that could be played for weeks or months before getting tired of them. I defy you to play Pong for any longer than a few minutes. And of course the apps and games on the phone. Why spend a ton of money on Legos when most apps are free? The bottom line is that Toys R Us isn't doing great, but they're also not doing terrible. Sure, they have their troubles selling toys, and trust me, the troubles were there long before the leveraged buyout. But it was the debt that resulted from the buyout that amplified everything. Back to the analogy. You took a pay cut. Yes, that's bad news, but the fact that you have the mortgage payments to keep up with is what makes it devastating. As for the future of Toys R Us, it's hard to predict anything with much accuracy when they're in the middle of a bankruptcy, but my guess is that they'll stick around. It is the type of bankruptcy where you restructure your debts and stay in business. And as far as I can tell, if this debt is managed a little, maybe they could have some freedom to improve upon their faults and become more competitive. Maybe work on ways to lower prices, create a more fun environment for kids, whatever it takes. Let me know in the comments what you think about all this. I identified a few reasons as why they're struggling with their sales, but I'm sure there's many more. If you have any theories, I'd like to hear them. And just an aside, there were so many interesting things about Toys R Us as far as their history and their evolution that I elected to exclude from this video. So if you think I neglected to mention something, I'm sure you're right. Maybe when Toys R Us either makes a recovery or fails altogether, I'll make a new video about it and have a place to include it all. But for now, go to that comment section and let me know your thoughts about everything that's going on. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.